everybody, it's Nikki here from Grassroots California. I'm here with Eric Stolhansky. Hi everybody. Um, how's it going? How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. So um I want to uh talk hi, to you. Barbara. Oh hi. Sorry, hi. yes. Um hey. welcome Barbara Mr. and I are hanging out. Yeah, we're quarantined, you know, just <laughs> spend a lot of time together. Yes. I'm yes. sure. I gotta stay at home and everybody's kinda hanging out doing their thing. So, um, Eric's in Super Troopers, as you guys may know. Um, he's part of Broken Lizards Comedy Group and has done a number of movies that I'm sure a lot of us stoners out here have seen. And so we're really excited to have you on our stream today and answer some of our biggest questions. Hey, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so I want to kick things off. Uh, I know you guys, um, I said you guys are Broken Lizard. You're from a comedy group. Um, and you guys met in college. Is that correct? Yeah. So can you just tell me a little bit about Broken Lizard Comedy and how you guys all started and how that all came to be? Sure. For those of you who don't know, like Super Troopers Beer Fest is all made by a sketch comedy group. Uh, and the title of our sketch comedy group is Broken Lizard. So uh, the best way I can describe it is like, it's, I always hate to make this comparison because the bar is so high, but it's so, we're sort of like um, a modern day Monty Python. Like an American modern day version of Monty Python in the sense that it's five guys and we write direct and edit uh, movies together. So mm -hmm. we do every aspect of it. And um, we started in college back at uh, Colgate University. Um, uh, we, some of us dabbled in theater a little bit. And there's a guy that was leaving. And he wasn't going to be there to run the student theater department. And he asked Jay if he wanted to direct a one act play. And Jay said, I don't know if I want to direct a one act play, but I'd be interested in trying to put together a sketch comedy group for the semester. Not really thinking it would go beyond that, but it was just going to be for that semester. And so Jay, who's from Chicago, uh, with Shout the comedy background with uh, Second City and I.O. and all that exciting comedy stuff that came out of there. Um, he said, yeah, I like, I like trying to put a comedy group together. So he formed, uh, back in school, the name was called Chard Goosby. And back, okay. it was a sketch comedy group, you know, like Saturday Night Live, a sketch comedy group. And uh, we had, there's a bunch of people in the, in the group back then. Even the first incarnation of it, Paul Soder and I were not in it because... We were a year behind Jay, and we, um, it was junior year, so sometimes people go away for a semester junior year, so mm -hmm. we actually went on campus that, that semester. But uh, we heard about it, saw the videos, you know, I was roommates with Jay, so I knew everything that was going on, and uh, saw the videos, saw the taping of the show that they had done, I said, that was awesome. And so then Jay said, well, you should audition for it next semester, so then Soda and I joined the next year. And in college, it was like 11 or 13 people, it was a big group. Uh, but then we moved to New York City afterwards, and we whittled it down to a smaller group, and then it became Broken Lizard after college. Okay, right we on. Comedy in New York, like five years before we started making movies. Okay, right on. Um, so, what was your college experience like at Colgate, and have you incorporated any of those um, memories into the films? <laughs> I don't know if there's much like specific stuff. Uh, a lot of dialogue. Um, names like for example spurberry in uh, super troopers yeah we have a friend named james jimmy spurber, jim spurber oh okay like, palavar so little things like that make it into the movie yeah uh it's sort of like these funny homages to friends um in college jay and i used to have sort of a mano a mano macho competition that we'd have with each other like we'd see, we'd see who could stick their arm in a bucket of ice and leave in there longest until you couldn't feel your arm anymore. The ice bucket challenge, okay. Ice bucket challenge. So that kind of led to the syrup, that idea, that dynamic that we had as friends that would do these challenges to each other led to like the rabbit thorny dynamic and that led to the syrup chicken competition. So little things like that are little uh, nuggets that kind of led to jokes. Sure. And now I know that that's coming up. That's a big question we have from our viewers. I watched a recent interview, but can you tell people a little bit about that syrup challenge and how that went? And was it really syrup? <laughs> yeah, I would say the question I get asked the most was, did you really chug maple syrup during the making of Super Troopers? And uh, if you, the story is, you want to hear the story of it? Yes, absolutely. Sure. So the story is, um, so we're shooting a scene, we show up and like any responsible prop master, the prop master had put unsweetened iced tea into the maple syrup bottles. So we show up, Jay and I sit across from each other, and we do our first take. And Jay said, well, let me just go run behind the monitor and see what that looks like. 
and he came back and he's uh well he's kind of like back behind the monitor for a while and i'm looking over and i can't figure out why it's taking so long and he's like kind of staring 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 he comes back and he said so hansky i think we got a problem he's like i'm looking at it and it just doesn't look thick enough it doesn't look like it has that glug 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 you know the bubbles that slowly rise to the top and people are going to call us out on it for not really checking maple syrup they're going to say i can totally tell it's not maple syrup so he's like uh, I mean, he's like, you're from Minnesota. I'm from Chicago. He's like, stop being a pussy. Just grab the real thing. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Like, All right. Oh my God. So uh, I didn't really think about it, but we just pick up the bottles of the thick, dark stuff. And we start just chugging it. Glug, 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 take after take. And by the end of it, you know, after you got a wide shot, other shoulder shot, three quarter shot, close up shot. Uh, Jay had done about two and a half full bottles of real maple syrup. Oh my god! And I still wasn't finished. I still had to finish my close-up. So that one scene in the movie where I'm like, "Wow, that was almost three full bottles by the time we finished of real maple syrup." Oh my goodness! And then uh, after that, everyone broke for lunch, and Jay and I ended up going back to his trailer, turning off the lights, and shivering in the dark for like an hour. Oh my god, that's insane! Oh, that's did all, you? Uh, for the jokes, guys. It's all for you guys for the jokes. Well, it looked great. You guys killed it, and we appreciate you doing that. Um, so that that turned out really well. Thanks for doing that. Um, now I know Super Troopers is probably one of your most well-known uh, films, but you guys also did as a comedy troupe. You did um, Club Dread, The Slam and Salmon, and Puddle Cruiser. Um, do you have a favorite film? that you watch or um is there a favorite one that you have just in general to watch uh i think club dread was one of the most fun to make okay you know we, we had made super troopers and it was summer and it was on the side of a highway and there's no bathroom and no catering it's really low budget so we thought the next film well we control the power of the pen we should write a movie where we're on a tropical beach and so we wrote uh, sort of like 10 little indians meet sandals and that's what's sort of the premise of, of Dread. But the beauty is we got to go down to Mexico and live in Mexico and shoot in Mexico and be down there for like, yeah, I don't know, like 12 weeks or something. Oh, so wow. That's the most fun to make. That's fun. And everyone has its own little flavor. Like Puddle Cruiser was our first movie. And, you know, you're excited to be on the set for the first time, trying to figure out where to put a camera, how to create a scene, how to tell a joke. So everyone has like a fun memory. Totally. Very and cool. It, I kind of remember every movie from like an actor that you like like you know when you get into movies it's really fun to cast these actors who we were fans of like growing up we loved bill paxton as chet from weird science okay. and all of a sudden you're on a set and you're acting with bill paxton all of a sudden or uh brian cox or linda carter you know we love wonder woman growing up so then to cast linda carter and then to get to act with her in super trooper so those are always like really fun memories on set that you take away did you write parts for some of these actors or did you kind of have it in mind that you wanted to be using these characters or how did that casting process work? Sometimes, sometimes. I mean, oftentimes you write the part and then, then you do the casting afterwards and you kind of make a wish list of somebody that you would like to work with. And, um, and then you hopefully are able to get someone on that wish list. Sure. Um, Brian Cox was an interesting one because his agent actually approached us, you know, was, we were very new. Nobody knew who we were. So it was not easy to get somebody to agree to be in an indie, indie comedy. Uh, but we got an incoming call from an agent saying that, would you guys ever consider Brian Cox? And we were like, Hannibal Lecter? You know, it's not somebody that you thought about for a comedy film. You thought like sure. Bill Murphy or somebody. And then we, you know, we had seen Brian and Rushmore, um, obviously Manhunter, Braveheart. And he had played these really, really heavy, serious roles. And we are like, well, he's an unbelievably great actor. I mean, he has so much more heft than we do. And uh, it turns out that he had loved Jerry Lewis growing up, and he always wanted to do comedy. But oftentimes, dramatic actors don't get offered comedic roles. And so the reason that they sort of, he sort of pursued us was like he wanted to have an opportunity to do comedy that he never gets offered in, in Hollywood. So to do it in independent films is an opportunity for him. And uh, what a great casting stroke of luck that we got with Brian because he turned out to be incredibly funny. Like he's obviously very great as a dramatic actor, but he's also very funny that people just didn't know about. That's cool. It's fun to see some serious actors take on more comedic roles for sure. Absolutely. Um, so I, 
Go see ahead. Adam Sandler take on dramatic roles is also equally fun. Yeah. I no, definitely, absolutely. Um, so, uh, how did you guys? I know uh, raising money to produce some of these films was you had some creative ideas here. So, what are some ways that you would suggest um, startups or young creatives use to uh, to fund their own projects? Yeah, it's a tricky question. I mean, the nice thing is you can shoot less expensively these days with uh, advanced technology. You know, even iPhones. There's some really great things that are shot out there with the iPhone, which is amazing. Um, we came up in the world of shooting on film, so it's a little more expensive. But our first film, we, you know, I'd say most people, with, you know, in the, in the industry kind of agree that the first movie is sort of raised on credit cards or money you've saved up or you hit up your aunts and uncles. <laughs> yeah. So uh, mostly in our first film, we put together this little brochure where we offered people, uh, we tried to get $5,000 from a bunch of different people. We'd ask aunts and uncles or grandmothers or anybody that would kind of help chip in for our very first movie called Puddle Cruiser. And then we had a stroke of luck because uh, Jay, Jay Giant Jambalangam Chandrasekhar, who played Thorny and Super Troopers, is Indian. And uh, a card, credit card companies apparently think that all Indians are doctors. <laughs> and so they thought Giant Jambalangam Chandrasekhar wow. was a doctor and they gave him this credit card with a large credit limit. Oh, wow. And so we maxed out a lot of that. Very cool. Uh, and so we made our first film uh, just by scraping money together, about $100,000. And we shot our first feature, uh, Puck Cruiser, on that. So first films are tough. You kind of have to do it yourself, you know? And what we always tell people when they ask for advice is no one's going to do it for you. So you kind of just got to take a bull by the horns and just try to raise what you can and then go shoot what you can. I think that's good advice. So um, I noticed you were very physically fit, and you still are. So, and I saw that um, not many people know this, but you were actually in the original P90X workout series. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. what has your role in sports and athletics been, and how is that? How uh, do you stay active now? I, one of the funniest things that happened to me is I have a pal. He was actually originally in the comedy group, and then he went on to become a very uh, well-known writer. But he thought that I auditioned and did the P90X thing as like an acting role. Yeah. Which is not true. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I was always athletic growing up and I, I, I was like playing baseball. I mm. was a baseball sure. player going sort of up until college. And then uh, I was trying to stay in shape as uh, in super troopers, uh, cause a, a cop, you know, is kind of in shape. And then when we were gonna go down and shoot in Mexico, I wanted to try to stay in shape and we were gonna go shoot Club Dread because I imagine that uh, a character that's working down there is probably going to be in shape. So I thought it'd be good to stay in shape. I, I'd gone to the gym and I saw this flyer that said, come try uh, this thing, the hardest thing you'll try in your life. It's physically, emotionally, mentally going to be super challenging, but if you commit, I promise you'll get results. And it was this test group for this thing called P90X. Yes. And it was like a, basically a free training program for, but you had to commit for 90 days. Right. And we were working on the script for Club Dread. And so I thought, well, this could be good. I'll commit to this thing, this test group. I'll get a free workout in. Oh, my goodness. And then I'll be in shape when the movie starts. What a coincidence. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> That's cool. That's really so fun. I, I did the test group. And after like 60 days, I decided that I was going to, uh, first 60 days, I wore white pants. And then one day I showed up in shorts. And this guy, Tony Horton, who's the main trainer, he said, uh, do you, what, what's wrong with your leg? And I was like, I have a prosthetic. I have an artificial leg. And he's like, are you kidding me? What? You just did this for 60 days? I had no idea. Really? Oh, wow. So I started kind of gaining confidence about it. And he's like, that's really cool. You should, uh, would you be interested in being in one of the videos? That way it would help motivate people to get off the couch and try to exercise in case they're struggling with diabetes or anything, you know, kind of ignition. They'll say, wow, if this guy with one leg is doing it, maybe I should uh, try to um, do it as well. And at first I was like, nah, I'm not interested in being the video. I was trying to get a free workout. <laughs> and he said, come on. He's like, you know, this is, this really could help people. And my whole life I've kind of avoided telling anybody. And there's a couple of reasons for it. One, I'm at, uh, you know, there's a slight insecurity to it. Uh, I didn't want to be seen as handicapped, but also I was really nervous that I would be typecast in Hollywood as being somebody that had a prosthetic, that I'd only be able to play like a vet coming back or, somebody that lost their leg in an explosion or something that I would not be able to be cast as like just a normal able-bodied comedian. Sure. Sometimes Hollywood can be a little shallow. Yeah. So uh, 
I wanted to be able to make a bunch of films before I ever said, hey, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I did all these movies with the prosthetic. And I'd only done at that point Photo Cruiser, uh, Super Troopers, and was about to shoot Club Dread. But I didn't quite feel as in my trajectory yet that I was going to be open about it. But when he was like, you know, this really could be something, instead of like being embarrassed about it as a kid, this could be something you could say that you help people. It was uh, you have your prosthetic for a, a positive reason. Absolutely. And I was like, oh, that's a really great way to look at it. That's cool. And so I decided to um, be in the video and hopefully that having a prosthetic could help um, be seen as a positive and maybe something I had been embarrassed about before that. Definitely. Well, it is definitely inspirational. And anybody at home right now who needs a workout, P90X, great way to stay oh. fit right now. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, it's the real, real deal. So we are all <laughs> cooped up right now. I see you got your beer. I've got my coffee. Um, what are you guys doing at home to stay busy during COVID and lockdown? Oh, man. Barbara and I hang out. We sing songs. We like to watch some... Uh, series on sh we started watching the michael jordan documentary last night we're watching oh, Ozark. Cool. like to listen to music any recommendations for music we were listening to bill wither the other night uh we've been a little nostalgic for some older stuff so um we're from minneapolis and one of our favorite bands is the replacements okay they're sort of the band that uh, started the 80s grunge they sort of influenced nirvana and Pearl Jam, but sort of oh wow kind of uh they're not punk, but they're pop punk. I don't know what you call it. I hate that title, pop punk. But, um, you know, you, when you when you hear them, you'd see, okay, I can see how they inspired Nirvana, their placements, that whole Seattle sound. Okay, right on. And a uh, movie, uh, singles, Cameron Crowe, uh, Paul Westerberg, who's the lead singer of The Replacements, he did the soundtrack for singles. And one of his records is, you know, The Replacements records featured in it. So Cameron Crowe is obviously giving a nod to the 80s Minnesota Minneapolis had a really great music sound in the 80s that sort of influenced Seattle. So we were having a little nostalgic run down that with the replacements, who's produced Soul Asylum. And then uh, the other day we listened to Bill Weather, Bill Withers, the Souls and Punk, Hello Marvin Gaye right now. Oh, cool. Right on. Got a good playlist going on. How about you? What do you got? Uh, what do you, what's on your turntable right now? Um, I've been staying busy watching a lot of live streams, I have to say. I've been um, really busy with uh, watching live artists, live musicians. Um, I'm really into music, and a lot of my favorite musicians are online every other day now. So that's really exciting to be able to, to watch the people that I follow and wouldn't traditionally get to see every day. And now I'm seeing them, you know, more frequently than I would be able to go, you know, to concerts. So that's kind of cool just to see the virtual impact um, that this has had. Um, but I do want to get into Super Troopers. That's really yeah. why we're here. And we've got some really exciting news from Grassroots. So today, just today, I'm going to put it up here so everybody can see it. We just dropped the new Johnny Chimpo collection, which features um, the black hat. I know uh, we can see this one right here. Eric's got the new black. That's a snapback, I believe, right? Snapback, yeah. Yep. So that's the black snapback. We also have the tan fitted which just dropped. It's available for pre-sale online. I just got some bananas. We got the bananas in there. We've got Johnny Chippa. We've got the Broken Lizard logo, I believe, is on the brim. Yep. And then yep. Um, we also dropped the pin. So um, there's now a uh, Johnny Chippa pin that you can buy at grassrootscalifornia.com. Um, write me out. And um, just so you guys know, too, everything is 30% off today as the last day of our um, sale. So a little plug for our 420 sale there. Yeah. Sorry. Is that me? Yes, I believe so. That's okay. My sister's trying to FaceTime at the exact same time I'm doing a live She's chat. probably like, I see you on TV. <laughs> um, well, let's get into Super Troopers a little bit, because I know that's really yeah. exciting for us, and we're really um, excited for this. So um, you play Rabbit in the series. Rabbit's the rookie, as uh, we found out in Super Troopers 1. So how are you most like Rabbit? Uh, I'm going to ask this as I'm trying to expand my window. When that sure. call came in, it made it like a little centimeter. Oh. <laughs> tiny, tiny, trying to get back to um, where we were. Yeah, they get back to see. normal size. I'll answer that as Barbara's uh, the tech, tech wizard here. I'm not really, but I'll try. You got <laughs> this. Try the little, there should be a little. Question, say, well, how am I most like Rabbit and Super Troopers? Yeah. Sure. Um, so I would say, 
you know, of the Broken Lizard guys growing up in Minnesota, I may possibly be seen as the most earnest. Oh. You know, I would say, uh, so, you know, Rabbit, when we were shooting Super Troopers, was supposed to be sort of the eyes into the world, kind of the, the young, I don't want to call him naive, but I would say he's sort of like more of the earnest guy because he's new. He's not really aware of all the sort of like pranks that they've played yet. So yeah, he's definitely. If he if he should be part of these, if he'll get in trouble, he likes it. He likes the idea, sort of a mischievous streak about him. Um, you know, you can tell that, he, you know, he's the guy that keeps the weed. He's the guy that followed the dead around. What I kind of like about him is that um, and even though he's like the earnest young guy, he kind of does have a mischievous streak about him. So I would say maybe of all the characters that I've played in of our six movies, that Rabbit's probably maybe the closest to me. Cool. That's good yeah. to know. Um, say, you know, in, in that movie, we we did sort of um, generalities for characters. Let's say, for example, like Mac is um, uh, the wild man. Foster mm -hmm. uh, is a, a civilian trapped in a cop's body. Thorny wants to be Billy D. Williams. Uh, I would say those characters are probably the closest to all five of us. Really? In any, any of our movies. Oh, that's fun. That's good to know. So, little personalities that we had that we when we created that movie okay um did you need to do anything uh to prepare for the role to be a state trooper yeah i went through the academy <laughs> yeah, like... some hard p90x right <laughs> uh, the funny thing is i don't know if we had the language correct you know we were just making up like cb talk yeah which i'm pretty sure was not right like 1094 and stuff like that or white beaner almond. Yeah, I got a cruiser. We were just mixed yeah. up. Well, it sounded uh, great. It sounded great. Yeah, well, that's acting because, yeah, we didn't do any training. <laughs> nice. Great acting there. Um, have you ever been pulled over in real life? Uh, sure, sure. Anything similar to the film? or? <laughs> um, I've never been messed with. Um, we no meows. We've had several funny stories. Yeah, I've never been uh, prank that I remember. Uh, Barbara and I were driving through southern Minnesota. It was cold, and we got pulled over for speeding. And I remember the guy came up to the window, and and he uh, he had that same hat on that Francis McDormand did in Fargo. Okay. I'm trying to remember like why. With the earmuffs. That yeah, one. like the the wood wool hat with the earmuffs. The ear on. flap hat. We make them at grassroots. <laughs> yeah, you do, right? So um. I don't know. I'm trying to remember why, but he, he asked me into the cruiser in front if I would join him in, in his car. And so I did. That's strange. And it's a little weird. I'm trying to remember why. But anyway, I ended up going to his car, and he's, like, looking up my license plate, and he's like, writing me a ticket, and I'm like, I got to try. I got to try. And I was like, hey, this, cop, this car's cool. It's a little different than ours. Yeah. <laughs> I played a cop in a movie once. Like, oh, yeah? Which one? I was like, Super Troopers. He's like, oh, cool. I've never seen it. Oh. <laughs> he told me to take it and hand it to me, and I had to walk back to our car with my tail tucked between my legs. Lemmy's had better luck. Lemmy was going 120 uh, up, I believe it was California Highway 5 from Los Angeles up north, and he got pulled over going 120, and it turned out that that cop was a fan. And Lemmy does a whole stand-up routine about it, but he got, uh, he got out of it going 120. Wow. Could have, could have, you know, give him jail time. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's over 30 is a felony or something. But, yeah, that's great that you guys can uh, pull that. I know Am Amy Olive had asked that question on uh, Facebook, and she wanted to know, uh, what was your favorite scene to shoot in the movies? Favorite shoot to see in the movies. You know, it's always fun uh, being a writer and being friends with these guys. It's often when you're writing the comedy, especially in, like, Super Troopers, you knew that one day if you were writing something funny for one of your friends that they have to show up and act in it. So for example, you know, uh, writing the powdered sugar scene for Kevin, mm -hmm. you know, you're writing and you're kind of giggling because you know, one day he's going to have to show up and shoot it and you, and you want to be there. So <laughs> writing the powdered sugar scene that day shows up where Kevin has to get naked and get covered in powdered sugar. But the funny thing is, powdered sugar doesn't stick to a naked man. Oh. We didn't find out till that day. So then the poor makeup lady had to cover Kevin head to toe in Vaseline. To make and it then stick. 
powdered sugar. So if you watch the scene over again, it's kind of clumpy at times, and that's because the uh, that was the um, sticking mechanism. Nice. I'm glad they figured that out. The so favorite scenes are kind of ones you have to write there, guys, to uh, act out, like when Kevin gets tackled or when Kevin tackles the Burke guy. Yes, and he did that, didn't he? He did his own yeah, stunt he there. He did it. Yeah, and I, I might have been. I it was either I was either under the counter or in the back with a fryer because you don't know, get so excited to be on set when you get to so like I'm gonna stand over here and watch it. Yeah, it's just waiting for the day when they, you get to shoot it. That's awesome. Um. Let's see. Uh, so in one scene, you're completely covered in shaving cream. They're doing like the little hazing thing in the locker. Um, oh. So Menthol. It was menthol. Fortunate choice by the prop master who we had no idea. So it that burns? Is you that what it naked. feels like? Yeah, you cover a naked man in menthol. That's Woo! crazy. So did you do all of your own stunts or did you have a few stunts that you had uh, stand-ins for? I always want to do my own stunts. You know, oftentimes the uh, union doesn't allow you to. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I did that one. I did the maple syrup, you know, and we mm -hmm. made that independently, so we had a little more freedom. Um, like, one scene, like, I wanted to be in the car that crashed the mailbox when we go on the the uh, hell night, we call it, when O'Hagan goes over to Grady's house and he starts ripping up his front yard. And, yes, everybody gets drunk off the black label. Yeah, I wanted to be in the car to, like, crash in the mailbox, but the uh, stunt driver and the union wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> okay. What was nuts that they did allow me to do was in the opening scene of Super Troopers, when Thorny and I go flying down, the stoner says, um, I should have pulled out my nine and put a cap in his ass. And then the car comes flying backwards. Mm -hmm. You know, like, driving backwards, like, you know, you go like this yeah. and just a little less touch your car. From the fish Super tail. sensitive, yes. Super sensitive. So I'm terrified, right? The stunt driver, which is obviously an amazing professional, just flies backwards, like hits that. He's gone forward, slams on the brakes, smoke's gone up. He just decides to jam it rear and just flies backwards. And I'm in the passenger seat. Oh, right, but, right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, instead of having two stunt drivers, they let me be in the passenger seat for that. I'm like, oh, this felt <laughs> more dangerous than smashing a mailbox at five miles an hour. That's super cool. That must have been really fun, actually. So you guys obviously love pranking each other in the film since a lot of your um, your characters are uh, often playing off of each other. Did you guys have any prank wars um, in real life off of set or uh, back in college at all? We're not big pranky guys to okay. each other. We're uh, really close friends. So there's a lot of stuff that we love to do sort of just, um, I guess, more with each other than to each other. Sure. There was one really funny prank over the years that uh, Chandra Sekar pulled off on Lemmy. Okay. Tony pulled over on Mac over the, uh, this is the long con. We were uh, living in New York City, writing Super Troopers, you know, doing that whole thing. For, we were, and, and we did a sketch comedy group, so we were in New York City for like 10 years. And there was um, one day when Steve Lemmy got a headshot from Tony Danza. And so this must have been after Puddle Cruiser, after Super Troopers, because the headshot from Tony Danza said, Dear Steve, I love your work. I'm paraphrasing here. This might not be exactly, but coming up, I love your work. I hope we get a chance to work together one day. Oh. Big fan, Tony Danza. Well, Lemmy framed that 8x10, and he put it up on his wall in his apartment. And we would often, we'd rotate whose place we'd go to write it, but we'd be at Lemmy's house all the time. And he'd be like, it's unbelievable. I mean, I got this from Tony Danza, like, Turns out he's like a fan of our work and he wants to work on it one day. And we were like, oh my God, that's awesome. That's so cool. That is. Awesome. And he left that up there for years. And then finally, finally, after years and years and years, Jay one day was leaving the apartment. He's like, uh, I haven't told you this yet, but I actually sent, sent you that headshot of Tony Dan's. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good that was one. a good one. That well was a good played. one. Well played. It was a good long con. That was a good one. He had them for years. That's hysterical. So good way to prank your friends, guys. Um, now, I know you stole a Porsche in Super Troopers 1, the original one. Um, yeah. It was one of the cars in lockup. And that was kind of your breakaway moment where you're like, now I'm getting everybody back and I'm going to go do something crazy. If you could steal a car in real life, what car would you steal and go uh, drive it on? I think I'd like to steal a funny car to see if it's truly funny. A funny car? Like, what kind of funny car? Like, a small car or something? Or, like... 
Uh, there's a brand. There's like a, a race, a race, a type of race when you race funny cars. Oh, I didn't know that. This is a play on words. Okay, right on. Um. Okay, then we've got the classic moment where you're fucking this bear, right? And you've got the suit on. You're making this big distraction. Um, sure. One of our sure. fans, Robin Friday, wanted to know, uh, did you guys use that bear suit um, again at all for any other pranks backstage or anything like that? And who came up with that idea? Hi, Robin. <laughs> um, no, I think she, I think that beauty went into storage very shortly thereafter of shooting. We shot the movie and then uh, most of the stuff went into a storage unit and it sat there for a long time. And then later on, people would ask about it. We didn't really know how to track it down. And then we thought, well, maybe during the Indiegogo campaign for Super Troopers 2, it would be a good auction item to help us try to get money for Super Troopers 2. So we went and found it in some storage unit in New Jersey. And she was a little worse for wear. Oh. She didn't look as good as she had, you know, after 20 years ago. Oh, the bear. The bear. <laughs> the bear. Did you guys name the bear? I don't think so. Okay. Just to see. You don't want to get too attached to <laughs> stuff like that. You're not going to spend more time with. You get um, heartbroken. You get heartbroken. Ryan Connolly, uh, actually our grassroots leader. There was a good, if I could, sorry for interrupting, there, there was a pretty good story of how that came about. I think the second part of that question was oh, yeah. who wrote that, right? Mm -hmm. and it was very collective. Uh, in our earlier years, when we were doing sketch comedy in New York, um, if we ever had to go to like a show that was booked outside the city at a college or a wedding or something like that, we all five of us would pile up in the, in the Jay's car. It was only one car that we had in New York and we'd use it whenever we needed to get somewhere. And we were uh, going through a long stretch. I believe it was like, we were trying to get to Ohio and we're going through this long stretch of just woods along a highway. And we started playing this game called the hypothetical game. And that was, what would you do if kind of thing and we would, and it started out with, uh, what would you do if you looked over and you saw a guy fucking a bear in the woods? <laughs> would you call the police? And then it became like well, the hypothetical of like, well, if the police got that call, what would they do if they received that call? Sure. They send somebody out. And then if you, <laughs> the cop actually showed up and caught somebody, would they think it's illegal? And then would they try to go arrest that person? So it was this whole rabbit hole that we fell down. And then we became a funny scene for us. It was the uh, rabbit it, hole. A rabbit hole. Look at that. <laughs> and so that was sort of the impetus for the idea of the Halloween costume of the bear fucker. I love that. That's a good uh, good story. Um, Ryan Connolly is uh, the owner of Grassroots, as you may know. And he wants to know if you guys used real weed in the film. Good question, Brian. Good question. Uh, we are broken lizards, so I think that's pretty obvious. So I'll give you I'll give you a backstory of that. The, the long and the short is yes and no. Yes. So uh, there's the scene when they're watching, uh, and when they're the. So I'm trying to set it up. We're watching a cartoon with the German guy to try to figure out if there's a hidden message in the cartoon. Right. And in that thing, we're supposed to be smoking. And the way that you make yourself look super stoned on camera is you blow Vaseline, like menthol Vaseline, into your eyes. Oh. Like you do it reverse, you blow into a hole, you blow it in so that menthol goes in your eyes and it gets red and watery. Okay. But um, there were a bunch of guys I think that didn't have many lines in that and they smoked weed. But we found out years ago when we were a sketch comedy group, we, we wrote this one sketch called Not Pot. Okay. It was, like, it was like near beer, but it's about pot. So it looked like pot, tastes like pot, smells like pot, but it's not. So when you want to when you want to enjoy the taste of a weed, but you have to study for a big test, you smoke not pot. Okay. Like one of our first sketches that we did is Broken Lizard. And we decided when we were, we were going to, we shot the sketch we had done on stage, but we thought we'd try to make a video of it. And so we all smoked, we got, we got stoned and none of us could remember our lines. <laughs> and we realized it took way twice as long to shoot it and finished it in production. And when you, when you have no money and no budget, you want to try to do everything as fast as possible. Yes. But we realized smoking weed and trying to remember lines and be productive and uh, be efficient wasn't very good for us personally. I know that sure. a lot of people can do it effectively, no big deal, like a lot of friends, but we weren't great at it. And so uh, we, we, whenever we knew that we had to do something quick and effectively, we realized it's probably best not to smoke on screen but we smoked a lot in order to write the jokes. Okay, that makes sense. Get the creative juices flowing. 
Um, so in Super Troopers 2, kind of moving on to the next film, you start off in this dream sequence, right? And you're part of the band, um, the Crackle and Bacon. Woo! Um, so do you play any instruments in real life? Was that inspired by any band in particular? Well, yeah, I play a lot. I, I've always played instruments growing up. Uh, I played guitar for a long time, still play guitar. So that's why I played the lead guitar on that. So I there you go. Kind of look like I could play. Yeah. Paul Soder, uh, Paul Soder and I are guitar players. Okay. Jay has a guitar and he plays around a little bit, but he doesn't know it as well. But the three of us know how to play. Right on. Uh, Kevin and Steve, I do not think play instruments. So, but Steve took learning how to play the drums to make that look real mm -hmm. very seriously. So we hired some tutors and he had like a drum tutor and like taught him how to make a roll look real. Wow. Um, so that was fun to watch. Yeah. That's um, one of my favorite parts for sure. So Paul's actually a singer. He was like in a singing group. Oh. He's a he's legit. And then I legitimately can play the guitar. So yeah, we we love music. One of the things we love to do is watch music documentaries. Um, I would say we're, you know, being in a sketch comedy group is probably as close as you can get to being in a band. Yeah. It's like our version of being in a band. We always love Led Zeppelin and ACDC. And that was sort of our influence, like heavy you know, classic rock. Cool. Um, so I think Stones, like uh, we all love the Rolling Stones, Steve Lemmy particularly. Dang so it. That, you know, I think that was our second dream. You know, we let, we kind of wrote that opening scene because we always wanted to be in a rock and roll band. Yeah, that's fun. So, uh, it's also a good point to remember here that you just bring up is that you get to write the scenes. So you get to write in the scenes that you want to see yourself portrayed as or, or portray. And so that is something fun to do. Um, Can okay. Figure out how to open the beginning of Super Troopers 2 because it was 17 years later. You know, and how do you just create characters 17 years after the last one? Sure. Leave people with a bit of a mystery and kind of guessing and. It was hard. It was hard to write that open. Definitely. Well, I do want to switch gears here and now talk a little bit about Beer Fest, another one of your highly successful films. Um, I remember when it came out and it was really fun and funny and it's just a really good film. So um, Todd is the character you play there and he's one of the brothers that's, um, you know, on the quest to beat the Germans in this uh, beer drinking festival. So how are you most like Todd, the character in that <laughs> film? I would say I'm least like Todd of all my characters. Um, I mean, obviously, enjoy. I love the movie and I love playing it. But um, we have to rotate uh, straight men and uh, kind of off the wall guys, you know. And so we we do 180s every movie. Like Kevin Heffernan will play Favre in the next movie. He's the romantic lead is Lars. Uh, you know, I went from like the earnest guy in Super Troopers to the killer in Club Dread. So um, I'm hoping nobody has not seen it. They're going to go watch it. I like this. Uh, but, you know, so we tried to do 180s and Beer Fest ended up being like the straight guy. And I was like playing the kind of wackier character a little bit more. Um, so I was trying, I'm like, I got to play a straight guy. And like, I, I sort of, I, you know, I don't know if I have a ton of similarities to Todd. You know, I, I, I love all the characters I've played, but that one was maybe the least like fun. Okay. Like, like fun character to play. Even though, um, yeah. Okay. Um, how much beer did you actually drink on set? And did you actually get drunk for any of those scenes? So I think by, you know, union rules, the prop master's not allowed to have real beer on set. Okay. And uh, we also would have been dead by 7 o'clock. <laughs> a lot night. of drinking in that one, yeah. There's a lot of drinking, a lot of large volume, a lot of drinking. So, yeah. you know, shooting 17-hour days, six days a week got to be on it so we had a lot of non-alcoholic beer okay but the darker stuff it was often non-alcoholic and coffee however we're, we love beer or you know we <laughs> so we have a we, we wanted that movie to be a love letter love letter to beer from us because we, we do love it that much so we would i guess i can say it's now it's totally cool but you know looking back we would have a signal that you'd give to the prop master to swap out what was going to be non-alcoholic to alcoholic. So like later in the afternoon or something, when you knew you could see the light down the tunnel coming, you'd swap out the non-alcoholic, the real stuff. Ah. So you could make it through the day. Oh, that's fun. So you did get to do some drinking on set. Oh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> but not, are any of the scenes you're actually drunk or you had to kind of keep yourself paced well? 
most people had to maintain themselves. I fortunately had a character arc that uh, I had to get drunk and recall in order to remember where the uh, competition was. Yes, at the end of the film, yep. Yep, so then I had to drink the Goldschlager. You know, I've been drinking for a year. I've been training a year for an international beer drinking competition, so I couldn't get drunk on beer. And then eventually, to get drunk, I had to drink a bottle of Goldschlager. And I wanted it to, you know, I'm a method actor. Right? Uh -huh. so oh, yeah. Chuck, <laughs> I want Chuck maple syrup. So I thought, if I want this to be real, I really should drink and get drunk to make it look real. So I only did it for the craft. Oh. Well, we love it. It turned out great. That's one of the best parts. And you got the gold on your lips and everything. Love it. Yeah, um, act up, it so in one of the scenes, part of um, how you guys were supposed to get good was to drink the Rams piss, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously that's a stunt as well. What did you guys use for that? Did you say stunt? <laughs> It's like the syrup. You guys chugged it. Well, you did. You did hear me tell the maple syrup story, and then the drinking beer story. So, and there I were mean, rams on set. If you want authenticity, there were rams on set. We did have an animal wrangler, and um, it wasn't the easiest to get as much volume as you need. Yes. Uh, we made it happen. We were gentle. It was all very animal friendly. <laughs> but uh, we collected it and we drank. Okay, right I think, on. You can tell. I think you can tell. It, it, uh, it, you're right. I guess it does look real. It does. <laughs> what is your favorite beer? I know you're sipping on something over there. What's your favorite? Yeah, I've always been traditionally a hams guy. You know really? Hams? Yeah, I used to drink that in college. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sort of a it's a sort of Minnesota beer, whereas yeah. like old style would be you know your Chicago beer. Yes, I like old style as well. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm more traditional, kind of like just a hams or a special X, you know? Okay. I, I enjoy it. Very Some cool. people make in the new craft beer world, they might get made fun of. No, uh, no not at all. And then if I went in the craft beer world here in Minnesota, we have some really great craft beers, like a lot. Really okay. Craft, as I'm sure a lot of the cities, you know. Yeah, the, especially in the yeah. north uh, Midwest, yeah. Great renaissance happening. Um, particularly, I'm, I, I'm a fan of Surly and Bent Paddle. Okay. And Fulton is great. I mean, there's so many. It's hard. It's hard to make a list. Summit's surly. I mean, Dangerous Man. There's so many great tap rooms and brews and stuff these days. That I'll take it all. There you go. We'll drink it all. We'll get wild, just like your night of partying. Um, you guys, you were on a in a wedding dress in this last scene that I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah. And then sure, you sure. guys are on a bicycle built for five. Yes. Where does one find a bicycle built for five? That's the thing. You write these jokes, and all of a sudden, somebody has to make it. Okay, so somebody made that for you guys. It's a great thing about and Hollywood magic, and you find these incredibly talented people. So by the time we made Beer Fest, we were working with Warner Brothers, you know, and they have the best of the best work working. So we had this incredible prop master. We write bicycle made for five, which I don't know if it exists in the world, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it makes it, and you show up on set that day, and he hands you a bicycle made for five. And it was so ridiculously hard to ride. Like, we all thought we were going to kill ourselves. We all thought <laughs> that we were going to get injured and we weren't going to be able to continue to make. We were, I mean, it was unbelievably difficult to balance. And you didn't have handlebars, right? That last seat didn't have handlebars? Yeah, no, I was I was trusting in the hands of my friend. I was just trusting that they wouldn't crash. And you're in a dress, mind you, of, of everything you could have been in. Did you Ooh. feel like a beautiful bride? That's an understatement. I felt really pretty. <laughs> That's like, awesome. uh, you, had, you, had to, you had to get momentum going. Somebody kind of had to like get the bike going and push you, mm -hmm. and then they kind of push it off, and they would do it before you got into frame, so you had a little momentum. And then you try to more than pedal. You try to not fall over. Love it. it terrifying. It was terrifying. Um. So this is probably the yeah. most. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, there's a scene after um, Landfill dies that I get upset and I go pick up the bicycle mate for five and I try to ride off in it. Okay. And, there, and you can kind of see the struggle that I have as my character trying to get on it to ride off. And that was very real. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so this is probably the most qu asked question that we got on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. Um, so at the end of your, your Beer Fest movie... Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a scene with Billy Nelson and you guys kind of tease Potfest, the movie. Um, so are there any plans for Potfest to come out in the future? 
I will say that at, at first we wrote that as a joke, not really thinking that people would take it as seriously as they did. What? <laughs> I know. I think there's people that saw it and thought that the movie was like, like almost shot already. Like they thought we had a sequel. And we kind of, well, we love, we're, you know, William Nelson is our one of our heroes. And when we had the opportunity to work with them, we had to try to find a way to get Willie Nelson into a beer movie because he doesn't drink beer. But uh, so we created this concept that at the end, we stumble across this uh, smoking competition and w Willie's there. So Willie's dress bus is driving through Albuquerque. He stops in, shoots the scene, gets back on the bus and takes off. And we created that, um, that last joke. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we st started getting incoming phone calls from 50 Cent, Cheech and Chong, Method Man came to our office. Oh my God. All these people like, I want in, man, I want in. And then we felt this pressure, like, wow, we should go make this. You know, yeah. we should actually go make this. Movie. And there's a lot of interest in this sort of multicultural weed movie. Which Definitely. Awesome. But the problem was Warner Brothers, you know, owned the uh, intellectual property, the movie. And at the time, you know, this was, we shut that movie in, I think, 2005. Uh, weed was not necessarily nearly as accepted as now. Sure. And they were like, we're the student Yogi Bear. So um, times are changing. So they're, I think, creating more opportunity as we're seeing more states start to legalize it. Uh, we were starting to get some momentum on it. And all of a sudden, this thing's happening right now with the global pandemic where it's challenging to get a production crew together to shoot a movie. So sure. uh, I would just say that we're interested. Uh, we have an idea and we want to try to make it work. Cool. Well, we look forward to seeing that. I know a lot of us are waiting for that. A lot of people commenting right now that they have been waiting for it. Please make it. We want to see it happen. So, um, uh, me too. We to make it. if you we need any extras, everybody right? here at Grassroots, we're all ready. We fit right in. People want to audition. A lot of people want to audition. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Well, is there any, um, are there any plans for Super Troopers 3? Yes. Okay. We, uh, That's a good Super answer. Two was, uh, very, yeah, yeah. Super Troopers 2 was very successful. Fox was very happy with it. It tested really well. So we are currently writing Super Troopers 3. Yes. Yay. Everybody out there, it's coming. That's exciting. It's being written. It's being written. Good. Um, I've got a question here that was from Troy. This, this question is from McKay23. Um, Which movie did you enjoy being in more Super Troopers or Beer Fest? I think you hit on this before, but... Yeah, I mean, I think every movie is uh, a fun, fun movie to work on. You know, and again, like when you get to work with certain actors, uh, on Beer Fest, it was really fun to work with uh, MC Ganey and Cloris Leachman and uh, Willie Nelson. Get to meet Willie Nelson. So those sort of highlights. But I think uh, my I didn't, my character, as much as I love Todd and I love Beer Fest, uh, I had to play. I played the straight guy in Beer Fest. You know, you can't have five completely out there characters, and so oftentimes every movie has a straight guy, and it's not quite as much fun as a comedian to play. So I think shooting Super Troopers 2 and playing Rabbit, I think I enjoyed making that a little bit more, even though making Beer Fest was fun. For Keep sure. Um, I've got a question here from Ben Duff, who's asking, um, when does the Alt Country EP drop? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Alt what does that mean? EP, Alt Country EP. Yes. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll disregard that then. So um, I do oh. want to go ahead and pick a giveaway winner at this time, if you guys are ready. So as you guys know, this is our super giveaway. Um, we're going to pick somebody live right now who's watching and submitted a question to win a signed hat from Eric. So Eric's going to sign a hat and send it to you. It could take a little bit because shipping's a little off these days but he, we will get you a hat and then we're also going to give you a $50 um, gift card to grassroots um, so you're gonna have two minutes to respond anybody out there if we call your name um, or your uh, handle please respond immediately um, you've got two minutes um, so let's get a drum roll I don't know if you want to drop a emoji in the comments uh, we're gonna go ahead and pick our winner for this hat right here and a $50 gift card. Good, Good hats. I'm going to pick a number. Some cool merch. BrokenLizard.com. GrassrootsCalifornia.com. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three. Um, Troy Donald Henkel. Troy Donald Henkel, who asked a question on Facebook. If you are live... 
um, with us now, please. Oh, he's here on Facebook. Troy, if you can send Grassroots California a message, we will get your shipping address from you and connect you with the merch. Um, I do want to use this time really quickly just to remind everybody that um, we have all this new merch um, that just came out. Uh, again, all of our 420 gear, um, our 420 sale, everything is 30% off, off right now online. Um, you can see Eric's got a bunch of that new merch right there. Um, and then all the new Super Troopers gear just dropped today. And all of that is also 30% off online just today. Look, he's got the Jimbo Phillips. That's I like one this of my one. Favorite. That's Jimbo it's Phillips. Do you know Santa Cruz oh. skateboards? Yeah, bear eating a beehive. Yeah, so he does a lot of that really cool graphic art. He's a really oh, fun uh, artist that we work with. Um, I do want to let anybody else ask a question if you're in our comments on Twitch. Um, if you're in our comments on Facebook, if you want to throw Erica a question right now or if you're on our Zoom call, now is the time for you to unmute and go ahead and ask a question. Anyone out there? The bear is awesome. Has the thought ever had this is from Alphabet eighty five? Has the thought ever happened where the Super Troopers cop pulls over someone from Beer Fest? Ah, like uh, what do you call that? Uh, like a universe? cameo kind of thing. Kevin Smith universe when he takes characters from other movies and puts them in a movie. You did that in Beer Fest. Weren't a lot of those actors and extras the same people? Uh, we did use some. We do like there's certain sort of comedic actors that we're we're fond of. Okay. And uh, so we do use the same actors, but I'm trying to think if we've ever used the same character in different movies. What about Dukes of Hazzard? That's it, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Dukes of Hazzard. That's a good one. I should have brought that up. Dukes of Hazzard was probably the first time that we ever sort of brought Thorny. Even though we didn't call him Thorny and Rabbit, we played uh, security officers. Okay. So uh, sort of a version of the same characters in the sense that Jay and I were partners. Right now. The crossover. I see people saying crossover. Um, I got a question here from Concert Vibes. What is your favorite munchie food? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, it's a, a good, good one. Uh, you go savory? Or do you go sweet? Right, like my wife Barbara, she loves savory, and I tend to go sweet. Ooh. I would go like a pie. I like a nice like uh, pie, like a blueberry pie, a uh, peanut butter pie, French silk pie. Hmm. Uh, watching a movie I like a nice caramel corn, maybe it's a drizzle of chocolate in it. Oh, <laughs> that sounds or delicious. Coffee. Right? That does sound really good. But then it's great also when you have like some salt and vinegar, vinegar potato chips. Oh, going for like so the salt and sour. See? I would say as a Broken Loser gang, we are a big Doritos fan. It was often like uh, Cool Ranch Doritos was a big one for us. That's like the best stoner food in my opinion. Like, just get me some Doritos and we're golden. Um, I have a comment here from Alphabet as well. Um, I'm just going to read it. It says, you and the Broken Lizard crew are awesome. He saw you guys in Chicago at the Super Troopers 2 premiere. Um, shout out Chicago people. Um, he was in the Ooh, army, deployed fun. twice. Um, and they religiously watched Super Troopers. So big fan and a lot of laughs over here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, what was your favorite strain of weed? Since you were the one who smokes the weed on set. <laughs> Do you have a favorite strain at all? Strain? I don't know, all of it? <laughs> Just weed, right? I mean, I, I tend to, um, maybe indica, maybe just uh, end of the night type thing. Okay. Good I answer. mean, you know, sativa for the, the laughter when we're writing. I'm trying to go with the sativa, and then obviously if you're just hanging out watching the movie. That's a good uh, one. I see Johnny Chimpo is actually in our comments here, and uh, I got a few other people commenting nice mustache, but shout out Johnny Chimpo, who's actually in our comments right now. Um, Johnny Chimpo? Yeah, yeah, he's right here. What are you talking about? <laughs> he says nice mustache. Um, Ooh, Johnny. <laughs> I see what's up from Colorado. A lot of people saying hello. What's up? They love rabbit. Somebody says, oh, look, a bar of soap. Um, someone here from New York. We get a lot of quotes. We get a lot of quotes. Yeah. So, all right. Well, soap. thank you. We do appreciate you. Do you have any other news or exciting news for us over here? 
No, I'll just say, uh, you know, keep hanging out on social media. Uh, Eric Stolhansky. Uh, I do Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So any updates that we're talking about on new stuff, we were writing the other day. Um, yeah, come come follow me on social media. I'd love to stay in touch. Okay, thank you. Everybody. So again, guys, one last time for everybody out there, Grassroots does have our 420 sale going on right now. Everything is 30% off. Um, we did just drop all this awesome new Johnny Chimpo merch. We've got the black hat, the um, tan hemp uh, fitted, and the pin. So again, you can go to grassroots.com and grab those. And thank you again, Eric, for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Daniel, Joseph, Elizabeth, Sam, Drew, Nikki, everybody for having me. It was fun. Check out this thing. This is grassroots. Uh, I got this in a package from grassroots. This is cool. Fall, winter 2018. What up? <laughs> we love that collection. That's good stuff. We're good to have you on brokenlizard.com and our, our merch. Well, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. All right. Take see ya. Care.